welcome again to the Medical Terminology Podcast on iTunes U at JCCC. This episode is Chapter 1, Part 2, Evil Suffixes. Chapter 1 introduces many suffixes that are going to follow you for the rest of the semester, if not your life. These suffixes will appear again and again in the remaining chapters, and they will appear on every test. So, it is best to master them now and forever, so you will not miss any points because of them. I am going to begin by talking about four pairs of suffixes that are easily confused, and which you must constantly guard against. The first pair is osis and pathy. Osis hyphen O S I S means abnormal condition. Pathy hyphen P A T H Y means a disease or a disorder. Now it's very easy to confuse these two, but one way to think about it is that one term is somewhat more general than the other. Osis means any abnormal condition. It means something's wrong. That's all it means. Whereas pathy means that there's a specific disease or disorder. So when you see the word disease or disorder, you're looking for pathy. But if you're just looking for something to describe an abnormal condition, then you want osis. Now in some cases, these endings have been co-opted in certain terms to have slightly different meanings. They're well, exceptions to the rule. And I'm going to try to point those out to you as we go. But for right now, focus on learning this. Osis is an abnormal condition and pathy is a disease or disorder. The next pair is gram versus graphy. Gram hyphen G R A M refers to a record. It is a thing, a product, something you can hold in your hand. Graphy hyphen G R A P H Y is the process of recording. You can observe that happening, but you can't hold it in your hand. It's not a concrete object. Looking at it another way, a graphy creates or produces a gram. The next pair of suffixes is scope and scopey. Scope hyphen S-C-O-P-E is an instrument that is used to visually examine. Scopey hyphen S-C-O-P-Y is the process of examining visually. So again the relationship is that we're going to use the scope when doing a scopey. The final pair of suffixes to be very careful of, very commonly students miss points on these, is ologist versus ology. Ologist hyphen O-L-O-G-I-S-T refers to a specialist in a field. Ology, hyphen O-L-O-G-Y, refers to the specialty itself. So ology is a specialty, a field of study. An ologist is someone who is a participant in that field of study. A good example would be a cardiologist. A cardiologist is a specialist in the area of the heart and cardiovascular system. Cardiology refers to the specialty of the heart and the cardiovascular system. So a cardiologist practices cardiology. Okay, now we're going to do some practice. And in this practice you're going to have to remember some of the word roots that we talked about in the last podcast and that I hope you've learned by now. Here we go. What would be the term 
for the abnormal condition of a burning sensation. That would be pyrosis. Pyro means fire or burning, and osis means an abnormal condition. So pyrosis means the abnormal condition of a burning sensation. What would be the term for the visual examination of a joint? That would be arthroscopy. A-R-T-H-R-O S-C-O-P-Y. Scopy means to visually examine, and arthro means joint. What would be the term for a record of an examination of the artery? That would be an arteriogram, A-R-T-E-R-I-G-R-A-M. Arterio refers to artery, and gram is a record, arteriogram. What's the term for a disease or disorder of a bone? That would be osteopathy, O-S-T-E-O-P-A-T-H-Y. Osteo refers to bone, and pathy refers to a disease or disorder. What is the term for a specialist in the area of the heart or cardiovascular system? Well, that's a cardiologist. C-A-R-D-I-O-L-O-G-I-S-T. What is the term for a tool used to visually examine a joint. Well, that would be an arthroscope. A-R-T-H-R-O-S-C-O-P. Scope is a tool used to visually examine, and arthro again means joint. And what would be the term for the process of recording an image of an artery? Well, that would be arteriography, A-R-T-E-R-I-O-G-R-A-P-H-Y. Graphy is the process of recording, and arterio is artery. Now, the remaining suffixes in Chapter 1 can be learned by grouping them into smaller categories. First, they can be divided into suffixes related to pathology, and suffixes related to procedures. Pathology means the study of disease, formed from the word parts patho plus ology. In this context, the suffixes related to pathology are going to describe something that is wrong with a patient, something that's bad. Now, procedures are what a doctor can do in order to diagnose a disease situation, or to treat it. Let's begin by talking about the pathologies. The first pair of suffixes that again are very sneaky, you need to be very careful of them, they're easily confused, is the suffix for pain versus the suffix for inflammation. Now for pain, we actually have two suffixes. Algia, hyphen A L G I A, and Dynia, hyphen D Y N I A. These both mean pain and they can be used interchangeably. However, you will find that algia tends to be used more and that there are certain terms that just favor one suffix over the other. Now, inflammation. The suffix for inflammation is itis, hyphen I-T-I-S. Now the reason we have to be careful with this is that in the common language we tend to blur the distinction between inflammation and pain. In fact, when we're speaking we often use the ending itis and we really mean pain. Inflammation is a much larger, broader term than 
pain. Inflammation is the body's response to an injury, and that will include heat, redness, swelling, and pain. So pain is just one part of the syndrome of inflammation. We don't want to use a suffix for inflammation, itis, when really all we're talking about is pain. The next group of suffixes to look at all relate to things that are messy. Ridge, hyphen R-R-H-A-G-E, refers to an abnormal flow of blood. We've all heard the word hemorrhage, I think, which refers to bleeding a lot. So ridge refers to an abnormal flow of blood, and only blood. That's the only situation where we use it, if something is bleeding. That's different than the term rhea, hyphen R-R-H-E-A. Rhea is an abnormal flow of any fluid, except for blood. So if there's some kind of fluid running all over the place, coming out of some part of your body, you've got something that is a rhea, R-R-H-E-A. On the other hand, a mass maniac in a hockey mask has come after you with a chainsaw. In all likelihood, you're bleeding a lot, and that would be a ridge. Finally, the third messy term, and my favorite, is rexis hyphen R-R-H-E-X-I-S. Now, rexis means to burst or bursting forth. It's like something is exploding. And I really like this word because if you say it a certain way, it sounds just like what it means. Rexis. Rexis. Something's exploding. It's just got that kind of guttural sound. And so... That's a mnemonic right there. Just think of your crazy instructor going, Rexus, it's exploding, bursting forth. Okay, the next group of suffixes related to pathology describe a quality or condition of something. These would describe qualities or conditions that are, again, abnormal. They're pathological. The first one is necrosis, hyphen N-E-C-R-O-S-I-S. -S. Necrosis means tissue death. The next suffix is malacia, hyphen M-A-L-A-C-I-A. -A -A. Malacia describes a condition of softening, abnormal softening of tissue. Now, a suffix with the opposite meaning is sclerosis, hyphen S-C-L-E-R-O-S-I-S. -E -S. Sclerosis means the abnormal hardening of something. So those two can be learned as direct opposites. Malacia, something gets too soft, mushy, and sclerosis, something has gotten too hard. The final two suffixes related to pathology also describe condition of something. The first one is megaly, hyphen M-E-G-A-L-Y, and that refers to abnormal enlargement. And the second one in this pair is stenosis, hyphen S-T-E-N-O-S-I-S. -S. Stenosis means abnormal narrowing. So in this pair we have something getting enlarged, too big, that's megaly, and we have something getting narrow, that's stenosis. Okay, now we're going to do some practice. I'm going to say a definition and you write down or say to yourself the appropriate term. How about the inflammation of a joint? That would be arthritis. Arthro, A-R-T-H-R slash O, means joint. And itis, hyphen I-T-I-S, means inflammation. 
Joined together, we have arthritis, A-R-T-H-R-I-T-I-S. If rhino, R-H-I-N slash O, means nose, what would be the term for a runny nose or excessive discharge from a nose? That would be rhinorrhea. R-H-I-N-O-R-R-H-E-A. Rhino means nose. Rhea means an abnormal flow of some fluid. So rhinorrhea would be a runny nose. What would be the term for the narrowing of an artery? The answer is arteriostenosis. A-R-T-E-R-I-O-S-T-E-N-O-S-I-S. Arterio, if you remember, refers to artery, and stenosis means abnormal narrowing. Put together, we have arteriostenosis. What is the term for the softening of a muscle? That would be myomalacia. Myo, M-Y slash O, means muscle. Malacia, hyphen M-A-L-A-C-I-A, means abnormal softening. Put together, we have myomalacia, M-Y-O-M-A-L-A-C-I-A. What would be the term for the death of bone tissue? That's osteonecrosis, O-S-T-E-O-N-E-C-R-O-S-I-S. Osteo refers to bone, necrosis means de tissue death. Put together, we have osteonecrosis, death of bone tissue. What is the term for the bursting of a heart? That would be cardiorexis, C-A-R-D-I-O-R-R-H-E-X-I-S. Cardio refers to heart. Rexis means to burst or to burst forth. Put together, we have cardiorexis, which would mean the bursting of a heart. Suppose that the word root for liver is hepato, H-E-P-A-T slash O, hepato. What would be the term for an enlarged liver? That would be hepatomegaly, H-E-P-A-T-O-M-E-G-A-L-Y, hepatomegaly, an enlarged liver. This ends this episode of the Medical Terminology Podcast.